Let's say that you're the owner of some type of copyrighted material. Maybe it's a movie, maybe it's music of some kind. And you observe that there is a site that is operating outside of the United States. And that site, at least in your mind, seems to be infringing on your copyright by US law. So this is the site. This is the site in question, and you are saying that it is doing illegal things, at least at least by US standards. The problem is, is that there's nothing you can do. It's operating outside of US soil and outside of US laws. You could even go to the government. Even if the government wanted to do something about it, it really couldn't, because once again, it is outside the US jurisdiction. The purpose of SOPA, and it seems fairly benign at first, is to give some tools to these actors to stop this. The problem, and we'll see that it's actually quite a large problem, is it gives tools to these actors to do much more than just stopping illegal activity. It allows them essentially to go on, a, a, to some degree, a kind of a, a witch hunt for anyone that might even have a whiff of enabling this type of activity. And it won't even just be for foreign sites. So let's write this down. So SOPA stands for Stop Online Piracy Act. And it sounds pretty reasonable. And this is the version of the bill that's coming from the House of Representatives. The one from the Senate, they're slightly different, but they have the same intent, is PIPA. And what it does is, if you can't go after the, this site itself, maybe you can go after sites that are somehow uh, benefiting this site. And those sites are inside the United States. So this is outside. This is inside the United States. So things that are doing that might include search engines. So search engines like Google or Bing, they obviously link to this site over here. You might have ad networks. So sites that allow this site over here to display ads and get revenue from them that are benefiting this site over here. You might have payment sites like PayPal or credit card processors that this site uses to collect revenue. And maybe most importantly, you have things like the DNS servers within the US that associate this site's domain name with the actual servers. And I won't get too technical about it, but when you type in something like www.shady.shady.foreign, and once again, we're, we're going to see that this site might not even have to be shady or foreign. But when you type something like that in, there are servers in the United States that associate that with these servers that might be operated outside the United States, that, that associate these, this text with a number that points to this website, that points to this website's servers. So these are all things within the United States that, to some degree, this site is dependent on. So what SOPA does is it allows these actors here, the ones that are obviously concerned with enforcing, with enforcing their copyrights, to issue court orders and notices to these actors right over here that essentially compels them very strongly to immediately cut off ties, to immediately cut off ties with this illegal site, or this what they think is an illegal site. Now, that might seem reasonable to you, except for the fact that it's kind of a shoot first and think later type of policy. The basic, the way it works is, is you presume guilt until this guy somehow tries to prove his innocence. And we'll see this guy isn't just necessarily sites outside the US. It might even be completely legal, or what I would consider completely legal sites inside the US. Essentially, as soon as this allegation is made and either a court order or notice is paid, these enablers have to cut off ties to this and you can imagine, if these cut off ties to the site, this site's business, whatever it might be, whether illegal or legal, immediately gets obliterated, especially this one here, including search engines, ad networks, and payments. And if they don't comply, then these guys are going to start having a legal battle. And so these guys are not only going to um, have to comply, and that by itself is hard, but if they don't comply, they themselves are going to be in trouble. Now, it gets really obviously creepy when you start going into, so when you think of just a spirit, you're like, OK, maybe this is, you know, we can, we can work around this a little bit. But it gets creepy when you, even though this is the spirit of the legislation, when you actually read the wording of the legislation. And obviously, that's what matters, not the name or the intent, but actually how it's worded. And when it, the way it's worded, it's pretty clear that its intent is to go after much more than just a site that's explicitly selling illegal pharmaceuticals or allowing people to download movies or 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 video or movies or or music that these owners don't have access to that when you read the wording it's pretty clear that they want to be able to shut down anything that isn't in any way associating with itself or in any way enabling it and you see it in the wording so this is actually section 103 of the SOPA legislation and this is how they define a site that is dedicated to theft of US property 
So an internet site is dedicated to theft of US property if, and so you know, it's, it's usable by people in the United States. And then this is interesting. It's, it's primarily designed or operated for the purpose of, has only limited purpose or use other than, or is marketed by its operator or another acting in concert with that operator for use in, offering goods or services in a manner that engages in, enables or facilitates, now this is interesting, enables or facilitates all of these violations. And these are the violations that would be you know, illegal. You're, you're selling things that you can't sell. You're, you're infringing on other people's copyrights. And it might seem harmless, this enables or facilitates, until you think about what that could encapsulate. If I have a site, I, I guess I am part of a site, Khan Academy. Let's say someone puts a message on Khan Academy. And from Khan Academy, from Khan Academy, they link to a site that actually is really illegal and that is really shady. They link to it in, in the message boards. Well, under this, am I enabling? Is Khan Academy enabling or facilitating? And if that's the case, then Khan Academy, by this definition, would be considered to be a site that is dedicated to theft of US property. And there are much bigger players than just Khan Academy that can be thrown into this bucket. Players like YouTube or Vimeo or any site or even a news site that ha allows people to put comments or allows people to put images. Things like Flickr that maybe ha in some way the user is infringing on the copyright. Now all of a sudden the whole site, be based on this definition, the entire site can be defined as a site dedicated to theft of US property. By this definition, YouTube could be that if, if it's viewed in kind of you know enabling or facilitating. Khan Academy, any news site could be viewed like that way. Vimeo could be viewed that way. A photo sharing site could be viewed that. People might take a photo of something they don't have the copyright to and upload an image and all of a sudden what what this by this definition based on just a, a sense that that's being violated they won't just be able to shut down these blatantly illegal sites they will be able to shut down things like YouTube or Vimeo or even things like CNN.com if someone puts a message or an image that they think is somehow violating. And so it's not just going right now the methodology is if there's some content on YouTube or Vimeo or some other site that they feel is infringing on their copyright. There are laws where they contact YouTube directly. They point them to the content that seems to be infringing. And then YouTube or Vimeo or, or whoever will take down that content. But what this allows them to do is shoot first and think later, oh, look, you are enabling that. If they can convince some court to give a court order, even they can start, start giving notice to these players right over here to cut off ties with major, what I would consider very legal sites like YouTube or Vimeo or CNN. And it's really almost any site that allows people to upload things onto it or put links on it, which is almost Facebook is another one. Facebook. Anything that has user generated content, if on just a whim, they could take down the entire site, not just take down that user generated content. They could, uh, with convincing just one judge or convincing just any of these, they can cut off ties with Facebook. Not even making Facebook.com point to Facebook anymore. CNN, they could just completely take down these sites on a whim. And it gets worse than that because you would say, well, look, if they're taking this down on a whim and you know maybe they kind of thought it was, but they didn't do their homework and they later realized that it wasn't copyright infringement, couldn't these guys sue back? Although already the damage would have been done. These sites would have been taken down. They would have lost millions or billions of dollars. Millions or tens or hundreds of millions of users would not be able to access these things. And this would also be true for Wikipedia. If someone uploaded something that where it wasn't completely 100% vetted, they could take down the entire, they could take down the entire site, not just that content. And you'd say, okay, that's bad enough, but couldn't these people say, hey, look, you wrongfully took us down. We're going to sue you now. Well, to see that they can't and to see how one-sided this legislation is, notice the threshold for being able to sue back if you kind of misrepresented a violation. The only way you are kind of held accountable is if you knowingly materially misrepresented the violation. So if the copyright holder just says, oh, I think someone on YouTube, you know, I feel pretty good that someone on YouTube is violating it, that YouTube is enabling a violation, and therefore YouTube is a site dedicated to theft of US property, and it later on it finds out that it, that it wasn't, it was fair use, or maybe that person actually did have the copyright to it, they can't be sued because they said, well, I just thought it was. They weren't, they weren't knowingly, materially misrepresenting themselves. So even if it ends up not even being a violation, 
these guys could take the site down. Maybe some small producer actually secured the rights, put it up on YouTube, and then all of a sudden these guys take down the, all of YouTube based on not actually knowing what they're talking about. And they can't even, there can't even be a, a countersuit in that case based on the law. And it gets even creepier than that because to be considered this, you don't even just have to enable or facilitate, which is almost anything. One could argue even a computer is enabling or facilitating this on some level. But you, could, you are considered to be a site dedicated to theft of US property, even if you do nothing illegal, even if you don't even enable anything illegal, but if you just take actions that make it difficult for authorities to confirm that you're doing something illegal. So if you view this in the physical world, obviously some people are doing illegal things in their homes. And obviously, a lot of people lock their doors to keep people out of their homes. And maybe people doing illegal things are even more likely to lock their doors and close their shutters. What this would do, and this would do it in the virtual sense, is say, look, by just by taking the deliberate action of closing your shutters and locking your doors, which makes it hard for federal agents to confirm that you're doing illegal things, just by doing that, that itself is an illegal act. So this is this is maybe one of the creepiest and draconian intrusions of privacy that I've actually, you know, I've ever heard of it, that, that was even attempted to be passed into law. So I, if I were you, uh, just as a kind of a, a privacy, liberty-loving uh, American, um, I, I'd be worried.